I'd just like to mention a little point on safety. In a workshop, you've got many sharp and dangerous objects. Power tools that can do severe damage. So, learn how to use them correctly and always follow the safety precautions with them. Never remove safety guards unless you really feel confident with the tool. Protective gear. Goggles, ear defenders, masks, etc. It's a domestic workshop, there is no regulations, but common sense prevails. When you think you need them, use them. Okay, having said that, now let's get on with today's project. I want to do a little experiment here. I, in my job, I get a lot of this left over. It's 12 mil in total. It's seven layer of ply, high grade, cabinet grade ply. This is really good stuff. It's absolutely flawless. It's got four mica on both sides, one a stabilizing side, one a decorative side. And it's just too good to waste. So I'm looking at it all and thinking to myself, now if it was like a lot thicker, I could really make some use for that. It would make good framework, very strong, stable stuff. Um, but how well it would bond together. If it was normal plywood without the form like a surface, no, no problem. But then I thought to myself, well, why not try a contact adhesive? After all, that's what they use for putting the form like on in the first place. And see, bond four pieces together, give them time to cure, and then put it through the paces. Cut it up into pieces, see how strong it is, um, and see just how far I can go with it. Because that would be then what we're looking at, 28 ply. <laughs> That's pretty stable stuff. So, I've got here some Evo stick. I'm not going to brand name, but hey, I've got to tell you what it is, because you're not going to ask me afterwards. Um, Multi-purpose impact. Instant contact adhesive. Okay, and apply it, even coat, leave it five to 10 minutes to get tacky, touch it together, it should be done. Then leave it 24 hours for it to fully cure. I'm going to mix the surfaces and see if there's any difference. Okay, I'll do it that. drop it on quickly. So I'm not bothered about it being accurate. Straight down. Okay. Now let's bomb them again. This time I want different surfaces. Okay, now we'll give that another 10 minutes. Right, now that bit's dry, let's get them together. Thank you. 
wait on it for 24 hours. So, let's get something to do. tomorrow we'll cut it to bits and see what um, its strength is like. Well it's been cooking all night so it should be ready now. Right, let's rip a few pieces off and see how strong it is. First sandwiched piece laminated up, looks very nice. Uh, so far feels quite strong. And doesn't that look a solid piece of wood? It's like steel laminated. All that formica inside that plywood just gonna make it so strong, so hard. As the pieces have come off, not gonna separate them by hand, that's for sure. Ply's gone, glue there and glue there gone. Looks to me like it could do with a little bit more hardening time. I can still feel a little bit of time there. Try another one. Yeah, putting a lot of force on this, so I would imagine most pieces of wood will give. Oh, and there it goes. I get in the middle, oh, centre joint, and you can see it's still looking a little bit green is that, and it's a little tacky. So I think I'll give it another day or so, and then run another strip off, just 10 mil or something, and just test it again. Um, but I think that's going to be quite usable. Right, so in principle, you can see it is well worth doing. Um, a tin of Evo stick or any contact adhesive is going to cost you about three quid um, and it will do a much bigger piece than this. Uh, so I think really value for money as well if you've got the stuff laying around. Okay right, well thanks for joining us, see you again next time. Before you go, just a little insight into my next project. Um, it's a workshop project this one. Um, it's an issue I've got with my saw table and all the ancillaries that you've got going with it and ancillaries that you get with it ancillaries that you make as you go along uh, using it and where to put them all and as you can see here I've already amassed quite a few uh, my rip fence that comes with the saw table all the many blades, tools for it um, miter jigs, push sticks of all types even my router rip fence all need somewhere to store it and Space being quite a premium thing in a workshop, no matter what size it is, uh, I'm running out of it quickly. I do have this under here. So I'm thinking I need to make some sort of a shop trolley to house it all. So that's what I'm going to be getting on with next time. Okay, alright, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>